in the previous lecture we started the discussion on multiplexers which are a very literal form of implementation of a truth table of any logic function so in that discussion we claimed that uh, multiplexers could essentially be used to implement any arbitrary logic function assuming that the multiplexer has the n number of data inputs where n equals also to the number of rows of the truth table of that logic function so we said that if capital n is the number of data inputs and small n is the number of select inputs that small n indicates how many variables are there in the logic function so therefore 2 raised to small n will be equal to capital n this is what we established where small n is number of select inputs that is number of variables and capital n is the number of data inputs and in the truth table lingo it is the number of rows in the truth table so this is the convention which we established so all said and done multiplexers have n number of functional data inputs capital n number of functional data inputs and small n number of functional select inputs so in addition to this most multiplexers come with another additional input and that is a single input and that is called enable so the enable input of a mux this is available in all the commercially available multiplexers okay now this works in a very strange way or not very strange but it works in a very unique way let us consider we have a 4 is to 1 mux which we essentially discussed as the very first mux in our discussion in the last lecture so suppose a 4 is to 1 mux means four number of data inputs so two number of select inputs this is what it looks like so under normal conditions under normal conditions this is what the truth table looks like when a and b are both zero y gets connected to d0 when a and b are zero and one y gets connected to d1 likewise when it is one and zero it gets connected to d2 and when it is one one it gets connected to d3 okay this is the operation that we know now there exists this enable input let's call this as en now now the multiplexer will work if the enable is activated now what do i mean by needs to be activated i mean that this is kind of like a power button for the mux not exactly but in many ways yes it essentially is a power button for its function 
so if the enable has to be activated it must receive a one so when the enable receives one it is activated so therefore as long as enable is one the mux is expected to work in this fashion so therefore all of these rows are valid when the value of en is one now suppose en we make it as zero that means mux is deactivated the mux is deactivated so suppose we make enable as zero that means this indicates deactivation then how will the mux behave now that is a big question now the thing is the thing that you need to remember is that when the enable is activated the mux essentially works just like the way we expect it to work it works in exactly the same manner as we had discussed in the previous lecture but when en becomes zero the functionality of the mux gets inhibited so you may be questioning that well does y become zero in that case well probably one might think like like that but when i say inhibited or when the mux is deactivated there is no specific value which y takes either zero or one none of these is assigned to y so therefore in that case y becomes high impedance or what is called as a high z because z is the symbol for impedance no matter what the inputs are the output is always high impedance so since in this case if the enable is zero the mux just does not care what is the value of a and b so whatever be a and b we will consider them as don't guess the output will always be y which is equal to a high impedance now what is meant by high impedance now this is something very strange we know that d0 d1 d2 d3 can be either zero or one depending on what the function is but suddenly why are we talking about impedance well here here we talk about impedance in this case because why would not get any proper uh, voltage value why would not get any proper voltage value now how is that possible well to understand what high impedance is let us take a look at a rather different circuit let us take a look at a circuit that is called as a tri state buffer so tri state buffer essentially is made using one n mosfet and one p mosfet so essentially this looks like this you have one n mos and one p mos so let me call this as a which is an input and y which is an output and i am giving another input called as enable en this is going directly to the gate of the n mosfet and i am feeding this through a not gate into the gate of the pmos okay so now let me draw a truth table so the output y is always taken 
as a voltage with respect to the ground that we should not forget. So En and A are the inputs and Y is the output. Now suppose I make En as 1 and A is 0. So if En is 1, that means the NMOS gate gets a high voltage and this 1 passes through the NOT gate and the PMOS gets a low voltage. So therefore both NMOS and PMOS are on. Alright. So therefore if both of these are on, as you very well know by now, they will act like closed switches. So A will be connected to Y by means of two parallel paths. So therefore whatever is the value of A, that will be the value of Y. So therefore in this case this will be 0. Now suppose enable is 1 and A is 1. Again both NMOS and the PMOS will be on because the NMOS gate is getting 1 and the PMOS gate is getting a 0. So A will again be connected to Y through these two parallel paths and whatever is the value of A, the same will be the value of Y which is 1. Now suppose I make EN as 0, what will happen? The NMOS gate will get a 0 and the PMOS gate will get a 1. So therefore both transistors will be off. So therefore the connection between A and Y will now no longer exist. The connection between A and Y will now no longer exist. So therefore it is like saying this entire left hand part of the circuit has now disappeared and Y is a floating connection. The wire is not connected to anything. So therefore it is very difficult to say what the voltage at Y will be. It could be zero. There could be some noise on it. But one thing we know is that since it is floating the resistance between Y and ground is very very high. So if I were to show the connection between Y and ground, I could place a hypothetical resistance and say that its value tends to infinity. So therefore irrespective of what the value of A is, Y will be something like a high resistance or a high impedance connection. That is how this looks like or this works. So since Y can take three different values, two well-defined values in terms of voltages and one loosely defined value in terms of voltages but a high impedance. So there are three possible outputs, hence this is called as a tri-state buffer. Okay. So the symbol for tri-state buffer is essentially like this. You have two parallel lines and you have two triangles which are kind of interlinked to each other like this. So A looks like this, Y looks like this and here we call it as input enable. So while A is a logic input, EN we call as a functional input. It is not strictly a logic function or it is not strictly a part of the logic function but it is there as a part of the multiplexer. And in some sense it is very good also because when the multiplexer is not being used, you can sort of deactivate it by keeping enable as 0. Okay. So this is the way it is. Now, here the buffer is enabled when En equal to 1. Now this convention is called as an active high enable. That means you need a high input or a high logic input for the enable value so as to enable this buffer. So now the question is whether active low also exists. Yes it exists and that is now very simple just a small change in the circuit. So again a tri-state buffer with active low 
enable. So again, you have the PMOS over here, the NMOS over here, Now, however, this A and Y being unchanged, the enable input now goes to the NMOS through a NOT gate and to the PMOS it goes unchanged. So how would the truth table now look like? You have E and A and Y. So if I have EN is 0. So if EN is 0, the PMOS gets a 0 and NMOS gets a 1. So both of these are now on. So whatever will be A, the same will be Y. So if A is 0, Y will be 0. And Y if enable is 0 and A is 1, Y will also be 1. However, if A, this enable now becomes 1, the PMOS will get a logic 1 at its gate and the NMOS will get a logic 0. So therefore, both of these will now become open circuits. So the, again, with respect to ground, Y will look like a high impedance. So therefore, irrespective of what A is, Y will be high Z. The symbol for this buffer is just the opposite. The main part of the symbol looks the same. This is A, this is Y. Now, since the enable is active low, it is indicated by means of a bubble, symbolizing a kind of a NOT gate. Okay, in terms of the input logic. So, this is when the buffer is enabled when EN equals 0, which means it is active low enable. These are two important conventions which are used in the enabling logic. So, so that's that. Now the question is, after discussing so much about these buffers, how does it correlate with our discussion on the multiplexer? Let's go back. Let's go back to the 4 is to 1 mux using, let us say, for simplicity, an active high again. So, What we discussed, well, the truth table essentially looks like this. We have an EN as a functional input and the logic inputs A and B and Y. So when EN is 0, we are talking of active high enable. So when EN is 0, the MUX has to be disabled. So therefore Y becomes high z. So irrespective of whatever a and b is. Now if enable becomes 1, the mux is activated. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So here this will be d0, d1, d2 and d3. So we have one disabled state and these are all enabled mux or what is called as activated. Is this fine? So now the question is what changes in the circuit of the mux do we expect? The question is there is not much change. So we had established the equation for y for the 4 is to 1 mux. 
So we should we will say when enabled. So y is still equal to that same equation assuming that this enable is not playing any role. So therefore if we, we can write in terms of the midterms just like how we did for the previous lecture. So y will now be a bar b bar b0 plus a bar b b1 plus a b bar b2 plus a b b3. So this is when enabled. So therefore let us again draw this what it looks like. So we will need 4 NAND gates for each of the midterms. Okay, so let us say this is A and B. This is A bar and B bar. So the very first term is A bar, B bar, D0. So we will send D0 over here. This is the first term. The second term contains D1. So this is what we will do. D1 and A bar and B. So A bar is here. We will make a connection from here. B is over here. So we will take it all the way. Next is D2. third term and A and B bar this is what it is lastly we have D3 A and B finally we will have one NAND gate to combine all of these. Now how does the enable feature? So far this looks just like our 4 is to 1 mux which we have discussed. So what we will now do is that we will place the tri-state buffer which we have learned about over here. And to this the input will be En and this is finally Y. So when En is 1 this will act like a close switch and whatever this is let's call it as what? Let's call it as y1. So therefore, we know that y equals y1 when en equals 1. And y will be equal to high z when en equals 0. That's it. So this is how we design a 4 is to 1 mux with an active high enable. Likewise, you can also have active low enables. Let us take a very quick look at that. Let us say, let us now, let's now make things a little bit bigger and better. Why go for just 4 is to 1? Let's go for an 8 is to 1 max. Let's say 8 is to 1 max with active low enable. Now active low means what? When the en will be equal to 1, 
that time the mux will be disabled and when en equals 0 that time the mux will be activated and it will work the way we expect it to. So therefore 8 is to 1 mux means there are 3 select inputs and 8 rows. So suppose we write like this en which is the functional input and a, b and c which are the select inputs and we have y. So when en equal to 1 irrespective of what a, b and c are y is high z. So this is disabled mux or deactivated. Now when we make enable as 0 the mux will be active. So now we will write all the select inputs in their original order. So therefore now this will follow whatever is the data input d0 to d7. Alright. Okay. So we have one state where the mux is disabled and here for these eight states the mux is enabled or active. Alright. This is what it looks like. So therefore, we can draw a logic diagram for this also. It will be a little long. So there will be essentially 8 NAND gates. I will not show all the select inputs and the complement separately, it is going to be too long. But the first input will be, there will be 4 inputs, A bar, B bar, C bar and D0. This will be A bar, B bar, C and D0, sorry D1. Next will be A bar, B, C bar, D2. Next will be A bar, B, C and D3. Next will be A, B bar, C bar, D4. Then A, B bar, C, D5, then will be A, B, C bar, D6, last but not the least, A, B, C and D7. And one big NAND gate with 8 inputs to combine all of these. Now, we will call this again as y1. We need to now put the enable logic. So what will be there? Simply, we will have a tri-state buffer with an active low enable. This is an 8 is to 1 mux with an active 
लो इनेबल राइट ओके सो मच ऑफ द डिस्कशन सो फार वॉज इन्वॉल्व इन दिस थिंग कॉल्ड एस इनेबल बट नाउ वी विल आस्क अवर सेल्स वाई इज दिस इनेबल देर ऑफकोर्स अ लिटिल वाइल बैक आई मेन्शन दैट दिस इनेबल इज देर and one of the applications is uh, well if you don't want to use the mux we could disable it by giving the proper logic input to the active high or active low enable whatever the case is but then the question is why not switch off the mux totally well it has its uses and we shall find its use when well not immediately but not very long from now when we are talking about some bigger circuits so this is what the 8 is to 1 mux with an active low enable looks like now before we go to those applications where we are actually seeing what function the enable is trying to achieve let us now ask ourselves a question we still have miles to go some miles to go before we talk more about enable so as a ground work let us ask ourselves suppose i have a logic function with three variables if i have a logic function with three variables what is the mux size i would need what is the mux size i would need so for three variable logic functions as you well know by now we will need an 8 is to 1 mux now suppose somebody tells you now suppose somebody tells you well we don't have we don't have an 8 is to 1 mux we don't have an 8 is to 1 mux all we have is a 4 is to 1 mux and still using that 4 is to 1 mux we have to implement a three variable logic function therefore let us ask ourselves this question can we implement a three variable logic function using a 4 is to 1 mux that means this will now have only four data inputs not eight two select inputs the two select inputs means what the function can normally be of two variables but we now have a three variable function what can we do what can we do let us take a three variable function a specific function as an example so suppose this is the function i'm taking
Suppose now y is y is something like this. Can we implement this function? using a 4 is to 1 max. Can we do this? Well, you can realize the bottleneck. We have three variables or three select inputs, but we are given a max which is only two select inputs. Alright. So therefore, what we need to do is we need to eliminate one of these one of these variables. So the question is, you have three variables a, b and c and we want to eliminate one just so that we can have two select inputs. The question which we therefore have to ask ourselves is what is the variable that we must eliminate now? All are important. We cannot simply say that, okay, let's eliminate one as per our choice. No, it doesn't work that way. So let us say A, B and C, let us treat them as bits of a binary number. So which is the most significant bit? A. Which is the least significant bit? C. So therefore, let us say, that since C is less significant, we will eliminate C. Okay. So to eliminate this, now let us partition the truth table by means of a dotted line. Now let us look at C alone. What you can see is that this C is sort of repetitive in nature. 0, 1, then again you see 0, 1, then again you see 0, 1, and then again you see 0, 1. So if we were to look at its period, something like a time period, the shortest duration after which the repetition starts, this is one period. This is one period, this is one period, this is one period. Now let us partition horizontally using the period. Alright, this is how we do the partition. Now cover A and B. Look at Y for each period as a function of C. For the first period over here, C is 0, 1, Y is also 0, 1. So over here, Y is equal to C. Now let's come to the second period. When C is 0 and 1, Y is 1 and 0. So Y is something like the complement of C. Now here you have C 0 and 1 and Y is always 1. So it is independent of C. So here for this third period we can say Y is equal to 1 all the time. Next over here C is 0 and 1 and Y is 0 for both cases. So therefore we can say Y is again independent of C and Y will be 0. Now what have we achieved over here? We did establish a relationship between Y and C by ignoring A and B by dividing into each period. Now look at A and B and cover C. What we are seeing is that for each period A and B are the same. For the first period A and B are always 0. For the second period A and B are 0 and 1. For the third period A and B are both 1 and 0. And for the fourth period a and B are both 1 and 1. So can I now condense the table and directly write 
as a two variable function. Here a is 0 and 0. So let's say 0, 0. So when a and b are 0, 0, what is the value of y? y is equal to c. When a and b are 0, 1, what is y? It is c bar. When a and b are 1, 0, y is equal to 1. And when a and b are 1, 1, y is equal to 0. Now we have successfully reduced a three variable truth table into a two variable truth table, but the y is a function of that third variable which is eliminated. So therefore, if we have a 4 is to 1 mux, you can simply connect c to d0, c bar to d1, 1 to d2, and 0 to d3. So therefore, what it looks like. What it will now look like is this. There are two select inputs A and B. For us to one max, there are four data inputs D0, D1, D2, and D3. So for D0, the input is C. For D1, the input is C bar. For D2, the input is 1 and d3 the input is 0 which means it is ground and this is y. Suppose now we are talking about the enable also we have to show the enable input so if it is an active high enable we have to show that the enable must be given a 1. So this is active high enable. So this is one of the ways through which we can implement a larger logic function using a smaller mux. Of course here the enable is not playing much role except the fact that we need to give the proper value to it what it is needed but apart from that the enable is not playing a role. So in the next lecture, we shall try to look at the similar problem, but in a way where enable plays now a little bigger role and that will, that is going to promise us some interesting activities. So we shall continue from this point onwards in the next lecture. Thank you.